Hey you guys, it's me Kiana coming at you today. And I'm getting ready to go out today. But I wanted to come at you guys while I'm getting ready. And to <clears throat> talk about to talk about the issues right now, as you can see in the title, that they're having with food stamps and things like that. SNAP card, EDT card, whatever your state calls it. And it's only going on in certain states. Now, I have uh, seen a couple of videos from people I actually watch. And, <clears throat> you know, a lot of people seem to think it's, you know, um, you know, some would consider what they think a conspiracy theory um, some people um, that have a faith base, they believe that this is just yet another sign that we are um, technically in the last days. Because as you know, biblically, it does have, um, you know, it does have sort of like a heads up on a lot of things that will happen before what biblically the Bible or uh, Christians say the rapture comes or uh, the tribulation. Um, and then you have the answer that governmental agencies or the um, federal government uh, says, which is that it's been something as far as like their updating or maintenance and what it did was it crashed the system or it altered the system or something like that. Needless to say, whatever end you may stand on, um, the fact remains that a lot of people um, are hindered by this. A lot of people obviously that are on a fixed income obviously because if they're receiving governmental aid and food stamps then they have been proven you know by filling out an application and meeting certain uh, qualifications and criteria um, to receive it in the first place so there's a lot of people that are affected by this okay the thing is that I wanted to come to talk to you guys about. I wanted to talk to you guys about how no matter what income level you're at, you guys, you have to always, always have a plan, not only B, but C and D, especially if you have children. Now, one would say, well, how do you plan for a plan B, C, and D when you can't even make ends meet with your first plan of A? That's the thing. Within your limits, within your income level, within what you have available, you have to plan within that. And we all can plan within that. You know, I had watched a video from a young lady that I watch often. And um, just like myself, she is an entrepreneur. Um, and she was speaking on how we all make adjustments for what we want, no matter what income level you may be. Um, you may choose to get your hair done all the time. I may choose to wear a wig still look polished and pulled together but I don't have to I don't have to always kick out that money that maybe you choose to do with going to the hairdresser every week or bi-weekly okay so that may be my way of still looking nice still having a certain uh, look a particular look that you're trying to achieve but yet I'm not I, I'm I'm not having having the extra expense, okay? So that's my way of maybe saving. Um, 
It may be somebody else, a third person that has the same income as the other two. And maybe she um, has switched her diet to, you know, um, eating, you know, don't, she doesn't eat any expensive foods. And because of that, um, she's able to shave some money off of her monthly grocery bill. Okay. These are all the same people. I mean, these are all different people with the same income. Okay. Um, another person may, she may choose to travel and because she chooses to travel, she may shave money off of, you know, um, catching public transportation instead of having a expense of a car payment and the expense of gas and maintenance. So it's all, all of these people have the same income, but they're able to save in different ways so that they can get what they actually want. So if you make it a priority to always have that plan B, C, and D, no matter what income you are, you still can save. You still can look towards a better future. You still can have a backup plan because the reality is, is that our government is very unstable. So you can no longer use the government as your back, backup plan. I remember when I was in the homeless shelter and since I was in um, the most expensive county, one actually one of the top three expensive counties in the U.S., not just in my state, I'm talking about in the U.S., they did not have the option like a lot of um, homeless shelters have where you can go to the homeless shelter and they'll assist you by getting helping you get on your feet and giving you housing. Housing is equivalent to maybe it's subsidized housing, maybe it's Section 8, uh, whether it's low-income housing, um, what they call in-house Section 8. That means that it's only certain areas um, that have it and you can't transport, um, meaning you don't have an actual Section 8 voucher in your hand where you can transport to another area. Um, you can only have that subsidized uh, fixed income or fixed um, payment, monthly payment, only for that complex that you're in. If you were to go move somewhere else, you'll be paying full rent, whatever the going rent for your state is. Um, the average for my state, for a two-bedroom or more, you're going to have to pay the minimum is $1,000 a month. That's just in order for you not to live in, um, in areas that what some would consider ran down, or whatever you're going to pay at least at least uh at least a thousand dollars a month and that's for a small two-bedroom so when i was in the shelter i knew the chances were unlikely that they were going to open up the housing list um, because the higher the income is for like the average income for a certain county. The higher that income is, the less likely they're going to open the housing list. Why? Because it makes sense when you think about it, because they are not, it's not needed for that county. Okay. So since it's not a overwhelming need for that county, it's no need for them to open it up quite often. Do you understand what I'm saying? So you just have to either wait it out and just wish upon a star or pull yourself up the best way you can use your time wisely while you're at the homeless shelter save um, while you're staying there for X amount of time and then just go out on your own and make it happen for yourself that's what Chuck and I did okay and it was not an easy road the first couple of months but we used our time wisely. We made sure that we had abundance. You know, we had saved um, and we had, we was able to save and we used our money that we had or was accumulating there um, wisely. 
So um, I'm saying all that to say that I'm, that's just proving that even in a homeless shelter, um, which is considered financially almost the lowest of the low, I mean, how, how much lower can you get besides being a homeless shelter, besides sleeping outside? Um, that's like the one step up from that. So no matter what, you still can, um, within your limits, make the best choices for you and not depend on just receiving those food stamps, just receiving that housing. Because at any given time, because we do have an unstable government, at any given moment, those things can collapse. And where will you be? And the tragic thing is, for not only you be in that situation, but for a person that has children to be in that situation, because then not only you're affected, but the children who cannot contribute, the children that are helpless, the children that do depend on you, they're, you know, they're affected as well. So, and, and no parent wants to turn and tell their children that I don't have any food for you, even though you're hungry. No, ch no, no mother or no father, no parent wants to turn to their children and say that I know you enjoyed living in your own home and enjoying your own bed, but we're going to have to sleep in a park. No, ch no parent wants to do that. No parent wants to do that. And although you may need those government, you know, governmental aids, and I understand that. Okay, I'm, I'm definitely not saying that. That's uh, especially with the economy the way it is, some people need that. I was once one of those people, so I'm not above that. Um, I have not gotten so puffed up or so high that, you know, um, that I can't see where I was. Um, that's definitely not my character. I once needed those aids. Um, but what I'm trying to tell you is that since our economy is the way it is, you cannot rely solely on that. Um, somebody may say, well, if I don't have any funds left over after I pay my bills, um, foods, I get my food stamps, that covers my food, um, and I don't have any money left over, how am I able to save? Well, if you're not able to save, well, first of all, I want to ask, is there anything that you are buying that's considered a luxury? That means hair, makeup. Uh, clothing, shoes, those things are not necessarily necessities. So if you are buying any of those, shave that off. I know we all want to, you know, be fly. I know that we all want to, um, you know, have a certain look. We all see things that we like. We all see styles that we like and fashion that we like. Um, but what you need to do is find a way to achieve those looks for less money. That's what I, I've always done. Um, I always say on my outfit of the day is you don't have to spend a lot um, to to uh, be fashionable. Um, and I always say you don't have to get ready if you stay ready. And you don't have to spend a lot to stay ready. Um, that was That's one. The second thing I say is stretch those food stamps as much as you can. The food stamp program is actually geared not towards, unlike what people think, it's actually not geared towards paying for all of your food for the entire month for everybody in your house. The food stamp program is actually, the, the way they calculate it, um, is actually meant to give money towards what you can afford, what they say that you can afford. So they're expecting actually you to be able to, within your income, the, the allotment that you you've already reported, they actually are saying, okay, well, this person can put $100 towards it and we're going to give her, the average person, whatever their criteria is or whatever their assessment is per person, um, they meaning, you know, uh, social service. Um, they say, okay, it takes about $100 to feed each person. Say you have four people in the house. Okay, so that's $400 a month they're saying that it takes to feed your home. So if it's $400 a month it takes to feed your home, they're going to give you $300. And because of the income that you gave them, because of your how much your bills and stuff come to, they say 
that you'll be able to put $100 to that. So that's why they're giving you $300 because with the amount that you put towards it, that they say you can afford to put towards it, it equals $400. I hope I'm explaining myself right. So what I say is find markets that will be able to give you, um, that you'll be able to purchase food for an entire month and not have to necessarily put towards it. That shaves off $100 right there a month. That $100 a month, you can put away and save. $100 a month, and that's with not spending any extra, okay? $100 a month times 12, that's $1,200 a year. $1,200 a year. And that's if, you know, if your situation doesn't change where you can't save more money. If your situation changed, you can save more money. So it's a potential of having at least $1,200 a month. I mean, $1,200 a year saved. That's the minimum. That's if you're change, you don't have any changes. But being wise with where you shop, being wise with meal planning, um, those things will allow you or free up funds for you to do so, for you to be able to save, for you to be able to have that um, safety net. Um, another thing is stop eating out. Find ways to make, I mean, we're dealing in the, in the year, the age of the internet, Google, YouTube. It's so many videos that will show you how to um, do a replica of your favorite meals at your favorite restaurant. I remember two years ago, uh, one of my favorite dishes was uh, spinach and artichoke dip. And I started making spinach and artichoke dip rather than having to go to Applebee's and spend ten ninety nine for a small portion of the app uh, for the dip. And I made it at home where I spent like $7 and I made enough that I could break it down and have it for like six to eight times. So if I had six to eight servings in Applebee's, just say, of course, I wouldn't buy six to eight servings. But I'm just saying, if one was to buy six to eight servings from Applebee's, do the math. That's anywhere between 65 I mean, $66 on up to $80, $80, 80 something dollars. But I was able to make that for about $8 in my home. So it's so many recipes that you can still have those great food items that you like, that you may have a craving for, and do them at home at a fraction of the price. You know, when instead of having all of your friends go out to eat, why don't you have movie night and invite people over and make food? You literally will save Oh, at least a hundred dollars by doing that and you're still having fun you're still enjoying your day and you're having movie night I mean for instance my TV, one of my TVs in my house as you all know when I uh, got it for daddy for our anniversary present and I filmed it when it was being delivered and everything like that um, if you guys recall um, that's a 3d 80 inch TV ultra thin we can have movie night here. It's no need for us to pay twelve ninety nine a ticket for the latest movie that's out. And sure, we all want to do those things sometimes, but my the focus of this video is not of what we want to do. It's what we need to do in order for us to have that security net. That security net that even at low income and even though you qualify, you can't rely solely on the government. We can hope that they'll be around for people that need it. We can hope that, but we're dealing with un we're dealing with people that are not stable. We're dealing with we're putting our life in their hands, and they've been proven that either they're lax on it, um, either they have a nonchalant attitude about it because after all they're still getting paid, or either they just have been dealt a a a wrong card you know uh, they've been d dealt a raw deal and they're trying to make the best of it whatever what reasoning it is the point is is that we have to even if we even if we do rely or even if we do need these things these aids these um programs we cannot rely solely on them and we have to be smart because if we're not smart, we're not able to raise our children. We're not able to, I mean, like I said, it's already tragic enough for adults to go through it, but it's very tragic for 
our children to have to go through it. And no adult wants to have our children go through that. No, 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 no parent does does that. No parent wants to to see their children go out, grow, grow it out. We we don't. I mean, we, all of us love our children, you know. So I just wanted to do this video and give my take on what's going on, and to discuss it, and um, and hopefully not only to discuss it because everybody wants to discuss it, but what are you, uh, what tips are you giving, so that you um, so that that person can get out that situation, so that person can make it through that situation. You know, we all can sit around and talk about things, but let's be real and let's say and let's incorporate what we did. You know, I'm not ashamed to say that I needed those programs. Um, what I would be ashamed of is to say that I needed those programs, I did nothing about it, and um, I didn't pull myself out of it, I didn't overcome. I didn't do my very best. Those things I would be ashamed of. But um, I'm not ashamed to say, hey, I needed those programs, and guess what? I needed them. I was able to do it. And sister, you able to do it too. Let me tell you, let me break it down to you how I was able to do it. I'm not, see, I'm not above, I'm not puffed up like that. I'm not above telling the truth about how I was able to make it over. And guess what? Just like I did, sister, you can too. See, when we when we really be honest like that, we're able to not only free ourselves, but we're also able to help the next person. That's that's partially our problem. We don't want to help nobody. We don't want to seem like we always want to seem like we're better than the next person. We always want to seem like we've never been there. Uh, we always want to seem like, um, oh no, that's definitely not me. Oh oh no, I w I would not ever. No. Yeah, the truth is, is that the ma the majority of us have needed help in some some way, shape, or fashion. It doesn't matter if your reason, what your your help that you needed was food stamps, um, your help that you needed was to help with your BG&E or your uh your uh light bill, um, your help may be that you needed um, you know uh help with an eviction notice. Your help may be that you needed uh school lunches provided for your children. It doesn't matter what help you needed. But the reality is we all need a helping hand at some point. We all have. We all have. And um, if you have been blessed enough that you haven't needed any help in your adult life whatsoever, good for you. I ask that teach me how you made it over. Because that may bless me so that I can share it with somebody else. I want to know. You know, if, if you if you never had needed help, teach me so I can help another person. That's what I say. So I know this video was long, but I just wanted to really talk about this and not just talk about it, but to actually give um, somewhat of a solution or somewhat of an insight to, to lead you in the way so that you do have that safety net, a real safety net, one that you have created and that you can depend on and you know for sure that it's there. So I hope this video has helped somebody in some way, shape or fashion. And um, if I can ever help give you guys information on, you know, like I said, even though I've explained some of what I did, if I was able to, if I'm able to help you um, and give you more information or give you uh, more insight or just to encourage you, um, I hope I can do that and I hope I have done that and um, yeah so make sure you thumbs up this video you guys um, it, it just encourages me to continue to share and it also shows me that people are not just here because a lot of people you get their view you don't a lot of people they view you and don't even have the time like you um, and I just don't feel like I need to open up to people that's here for the wrong reasons. So when you thumbs up, that encourages me to continue to share because it says, hey, you know, I found value in that of which you did share. And um, it's appreciated. That's what thumbs and up means to me. Um, it's not that I need anybody to co-sign, but like I said, it just makes me feel comfortable to know it's just, it just gives me, it gives me, it shows me and proves to me that what I'm sharing is a value 
and for me to continue to share it because it is something of substance. It has blessed you. It has given you a greater insight. Um, you know, we laugh, we cry, we, we do it all together. And I'm not going to continue to make open up and make myself vulnerable and to share um, things that has helped me and blessed me. And um, if it's not received the right way or if it's just, I'm just going to take the information and yeah, she took time to give the information. I'm just going to take the information and buy. I don't even like her anyway. I'm not going to do it. No, I'm not going to do it. It, it. That would be foolish of me. Um, so that's why I say please thumbs up. Um, and I hope that you will do so with this video. All right, you guys. So I'll talk to you guys later. I thank you for riding with a sister. And, um, yeah. Be blessed.